Get ready to take your embroidery from basic to balling, because in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to turn a basketball like this into a show-stopping showpiece that's perfect for any trophy case or man cave. I'll take you through the entire process from digitizing your design to removing and reattaching your panels from your basketball. I will go into details about what went wrong with this project and what method works best so that you can also embroider on a basketball. However, before we get started, if you like this video or enjoy content like this, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. So I've really been excited for this month, not only because it's my birthday month, but also because it's March Madness. And I had this idea, I thought about embroidering on a basketball. So I started looking around on, you know, on YouTube, on Google, and tried to figure out some ideas of how I can remove some of the panels. And I came across one video in particular where it came out really well. So I wanna try that method and see how, how that turns out. So the first method I tried, I actually used a heat gun and an X-Acto knife. It, it worked okay, I, I, I was actually pulling from the corner and just when I pulled one corner, I would have the heat gun and just pull it up little by little and then scrape with the X-Acto knife. But what ended up happening, my end result, it looked kind of like Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So shout out to any of you horror fans out there. So that for me, I, I wasn't too satisfied. But then the next version I did was with acetone and with Gorilla Glue. And this one did really well. It actually looked just like the ball without touching it. So here's the materials we're gonna be using for this project. A regulation composite leather basketball, the eight in one hooping device, adhesive backing, water soluble topping, paper clips, an X-Acto knife, a black pen or black Sharpie, clear Gorilla Glue, a small paintbrush, a pair of applique scissors, 90 by 14 embroidery needles, which will be used for our composite leather when we embroider, metallic gold thread, 40 weight, nail polish remover, and finally, a mask. I'll also be using the MT-1501 15 needle commercial embroidery machine. This machine is perfect for tackling a variety of embroidery projects and multicolored designs. Now that we have all our materials, it's time to digitize our design. Currently, it's at 5.59 inches by 2.25 inches, which will already fit perfectly onto one of the leather panels on my basketball. So I'll go ahead and leave that alone. I'll start by working on the black letters in the word All Stars right here. I'll select them all by highlighting them like so, then right click and select group. Now that they're grouped, I'm going to right click again and convert them to a complex fill. Okay, now let's go back to our realistic view and I'll adjust my density to 0 0.30 so there aren't any spaces between my stitches and change the style by selecting smooth for the pattern and hit apply. Now usually a complex fill is used for filling in large areas of stitching like the background of a design and most times you will use a satin stitch for text but you can use a complex fill for text as well. In order for the embroidery to come out smoothly I'll have to make some edits. To do that I'm going to switch from realistic view to line view and zoom in here. See these stitches along the edges of the text? This will make my embroidered text look jagged with a complex fill. So to fix it I'm going to select my text again, head over to the general panel and switch my connection from chisel to square and hit apply. See how the edges are nicely squared off and smooth now? That's exactly what we want. Okay, now let's go back to our realistic view to create our steel stitch outline. I'm gonna select the entirety of the word all stars and I'll copy and paste it on top of itself like so. Then I'll convert the one that is on top by selecting it over here in the sequence panel on the right. Right click, convert to, and select steel stitch. Now I'll go to the right side of the screen under my steel tab and adjust my width and density. And our outline is done. Now I just have to color my outline so I will click on my gold color. Next I'll go to the right side of the screen again, click on my command tab and select trim always. This will automatically tell my machine to trim the design while it embroiders so I don't end up with a bunch of jump stitches connecting my letters. With that fixed and this portion of the design complete, it's time to move on to the word ball. So I'll go ahead and group the entire word, right click, select group, and then right click and convert this word to a satin stitch. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna adjust my density really quick and then we could do some adjusting. 
From here, we have to edit each individual letter separately. So I'm gonna start with selecting the letter B and grab my shape tool up here on the top left hand corner. I'm going to temporarily change the color of my text so that my split and angle lines stand out more. If you notice here, you'll see we have the green lines, which are split lines, and then these right here, which are actually yellow. These yellow ones are called angle lines, and both of them control the direction your stitches will run once embroidered. So I'm going to add a split line right here, and then do some adjusting to my other angle lines and split lines until they are to my liking. And then I'll do the same thing for each individual letter in the word ball. We didn't have to do this for our All-Stars text because we use Complex Fill and Complex Fill doesn't need this type of adjustment. Now I will work on my letter A. And now my two L's. With that done, it's time to move on to my stars. And for these, I'm gonna go ahead and manually digitize them. If you look, when I highlight it, you'll see a dot within the star and that serves as my center point. I'll go ahead and grab my ruler and drag that down right to where the center point is so I know where to stop. Then I'll grab my complex fill tool to trace out the top point of the star like so. I will click at the top of my star and then create a spear-like shape. And then I'll right-click and convert it to a satin stitch. I'm going to set my density to 0.30 and then use my shape tool to set my angle line straight. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. So now I'm going to copy my shape and then I'm going to paste it. Then I'm going to drag my copy to the right. Grab it by this little purple dot right here. The purple dot helps me to rotate my shape and I'm able to line it up with the other points of my star just like this and make adjustments wherever necessary. Now I'm going to repeat the same copy-paste process to fill my star. Now that that's done, I'm able to just copy this entire star and paste it over the second star on the other side of the design so I don't have to go through that entire process again. Beautiful. Okay, with the stars all set, I can move on to the final portion of my design, the word streak. For this section, I'm gonna go ahead and manually digitize it as well. So I'll start by selecting my satin tool from the toolbar. This will give my lettering greater detail. Then I will hold down my command button and build a ladder of angle lines along the top curve of my S. This will help ensure the embroidery follows the curves of your letters.
Now that I've touched up each section with my shape tool and adjusted the density, I'm going to repeat the same process for each individual letter in street. All right, now that we have that done, I'm gonna select my entire design by highlighting it, going to the Command tab on the right side, click End Command and select Trim, so I don't have a bunch of jump stitches. Then I will come up to the top of my screen and click on Slow Redraw. This will simulate how my machine will embroider my design to ensure everything looks good and that no mistakes were made in the digitizing process. Perfect. And with that, our design is ready to embroider. And now it's time to go hoop my basketball panel. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna peel the panel from our basketball. So I will take my X-Acto knife and carefully scrape along this edge here until the leather begins peeling away from the ball. Now this will only work if you have a composite leather basketball. You can't embroider on a 100% leather or rubber basketball because you won't be able to peel the panels off like we're doing with the composite leather basketball. Once the border of the panel starts to come off, I'm going to gently pour nail polish remover as I peel the panel off the ball. However, be careful when you do this and do this very slowly because the panel is going to get wet from the nail polish remover. At the halfway point, what I'm going to do is grab my Sharpie and make a line right there in the center so that I know where my placement is. Now I'm going to go ahead and peel the rest of my panel off. Once I got my panel removed, I'm gonna let it dry for about an hour. We use the black Sharpie on the edges so that it doesn't look frayed when we place the panel back. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna take my Sharpie and pull a small S on the corner of my panel, which will indicate to me where I will start reattaching it after I complete the embroidery portion. Now I will take my adhesive backing and apply it to my eight in one frame. One of the great things about the 8-in-1 is its versatility. As the name suggests, this accessory consists of eight floating frames that can be used to embroider caps, beanies, bags, pockets, sleeves, and any other hard to hoop item. For this project, I'm gonna use a bag frame so that I have more space to work with. I used the 8-in-1 to embroider a beanie in a recent Embroidery Hub episode. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to it in the card above and the description below so you can check it out. I'll also leave a link to the 8 one product page at shop.racoma.com. Once that's done, I'm gonna lay my water-soluble stabilizer on top of my basketball panel. To make sure everything stays nice and secure while I'm embroidering, I'm gonna take my clips and secure the end of my panel. As I do this, I wanna be careful not to flip the panel underneath my hoop. Otherwise, my needle could accidentally come down and embroider my panel closed. Now I'm ready to embroider my design on my panel. First, I will do my trace. And then I'm gonna do my contour trace. And my contour trace will show me exactly where my design is gonna stitch.
Now I will remove my water soluble stabilizer and carefully remove the smaller pieces from each letter. Now we are going to peel it. I will also remove the leftover backing on the back side so that when I placed it back on the ball, it doesn't create any issues. I will add another layer of acetone to remove the glue residue. All right, now it's time to reattach my panel back to my basketball. For this part, I found myself needing a second pair of hands, so I found some help. I strongly recommend it. It made the whole process very simple. When placing the panel back, I recommend a few tips. Start at one corner of the panel and slowly mold back into place using contact adhesive and a Sharpie. Make sure to do an even spread to avoid excess glue residue. With the bottom portion of the Sharpie and with your fingers, gently mold the panel back into place by sliding onto the edges to get as smooth of a placement as possible. When removing a basketball panel, there will always be excess due to the material stretching. A helpful tip will be to glue the panel first and then cut away any excess. And with that, we are officially done. Let's talk about how much profit we stand to make doing a project just like this. The basketball cost me $20. The nail polish remover was $1.50 and the Gorilla Glue was $7. I used about $2 worth of stabilizer and thread. So my total all-in cost for this project was around $30. Once finished, you can easily sell a custom basketball like this online for up to $108, which means I can make a profit of over $75. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm glad I was able to finish this project even though the first method didn't work. I hope I was able to show you some tips and tricks for future projects you take on. If you're looking for more inspiration for your next embroidery project or more advice, then be sure to check us out on Facebook and join our Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery group. If you haven't done so already, follow us on Instagram and TikTok for informative and entertaining content. Also, be sure to let us know in the comments if there are any other topics you'd like to see in a future episode of Embroidery Hub. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.